please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, well, a quick check on what uh, we can do technically because the market is practically yo-yoing. Uh, at this point in time, the mid-caps after moving about quarter percent in the red are now half a percent in the green. So there's a big yo-yo movement uh, with the markets bouncing from uh, that low that they touched uh, earlier in the morning. Ashwini Gujral, Mitesh Chakkar uh, and Sandeep Pagle are back with us. Uh, uh, morning again, Ashwini. Uh, well, how do you rate this uh, 10,285? A better time to sell? See, that's what I told you in the morning that although it's an uptrend, it'll feel like a sideways market. Mm. So uh, one trade uh, is over where we went short in the morning and then covered later on. Mm. Now let's see how we deal with yesterday's high. The way this rally is progressing, you know, hardly 30, 40 points. These sort of moves uh, often don't sustain beyond a time. So maybe say like 11 o'clock thereabouts, mm. uh, you should see that uh, the market, if it's not able to cross uh, today's and yesterday's high, will start to give back because uh, all these people who are buying right now or covering shorts will not get uh, much follow through. So that way it's a weak rally to go by. If you see the top gainers, you have PFC, REC, these sort of companies which are going up. But if you see the main banks, Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, they are participating a whole lot. So going by that, it's a rally, it's a weak rally, and at higher levels you should sell. For the moment, uh, you know, you should be uh, selling on Canra Bank with a stop at about 250, target of 235. Yes Bank is a sell with a stop of 311, target of 295. And maybe Dabar you can buy with a stop of 328, target of 345. Oh yes, big move on Dabar in price. Just pull out the intraday chart of that stock. Uh, had a good close yesterday as well and right now up about 2% on, on Dabur. In fact, uh, the rest of the FMCG pack has also done well. Uh, Ashwini, a couple of other chart checks uh, from you, m and Financials and Biocon. See, Biocon has been my uh, call on uh, the pharma sector and uh, it's holding most of its averages. So if you have to buy something in the pharma and in general, I think Biocon uh, kind of uh, qualifies there. Uh, overall, uh, I think uh, once we get past 650, I think uh, there should be life till uh, 750. m and m financials, you know, financials, a rally has to be taken with a pinch of salt. Uh, if I have to buy a NBFC, maybe I'll buy a Bajaj Finance That's because me. the rally out there may be steadier. What I'm also noticing is that this China news, whatever it is, is impacting, you know, NMDC, Tata Steel, Hindalco, etc. And they are making lows of the day. So if the market reverses, I think metals could also participate on the downside. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, uh, Sandeep, your uh, uh, trades? Good morning, Lata. I would go with a buy in a Hero Moto Corp, stop loss of 36, 30, target 37, 20. Hmm. And a sell in a BEML, stop loss 1124, target 1076. All right. Thanks for those calls. So sell in BEML. BEML, by the way, has hit a new 52-week low today. So just keep an eye out on that stock. Uh, we've also got Mitesh Shakkar on board. Mitesh, what are you looking to buy or sell now? Uh, in fact, uh, Hero Motors is a buy on my list as well. Uh, I gave it at about 36.20 smooth up, so try to buy it around 36.25. Keep a stop below 35.95, look for 36.70.80 as your target zone. And I have one sell call and that's on uh, Petronet with a stop at 2.38 for targets close to about 2.21. Okay, by the way, I think that the point that Ashwini was making on China, Rebar Steel, which is uh, uh, the barometer to check the international steel prices, uh, that actually is now down almost 6% at uh, 3,600 yuan per ton. So there's a big slide going on right now in steel prices globally, and that is what's impacting. Just pull out the intraday chart of Tata Steel. Uh, that's, of course, the global play right now in steel, mm. and after opening higher, that's gone to the low. So, uh, you know, that, that trade is happening right now because of China. And, you know, yesterday I was talking to someone, he said that the, the big uh, move on metals would not happen from the U.S., but would happen from China. So just keep an eye on what's we happening. We are keeping there. an eye, and that's why we have uh, Chetan wow. joining yeah, us. Good. Okay, uh, Chetan, just coming to you. Okay, that's the HG Infra listing. And, uh, okay, we'll just put up the price for you. Okay, listing at a mild premium of 1%.
Not a great day for listing, I guess, because the markets the are sulking a bit. But still, it's just managed to about list in the green. But uh, let's get back to the main theme that uh, uh, Anuj was talking about, uh, the fact that steel prices are now looking like taking a beating because of this fear of a global trade war uh, that has been spooked. Uh, uh, of course, uh, President Trump has said that he will exclude uh, Na the NAFTA countries, that's Mexico and Canada, but uh, that still means that it is unleashed on the rest of the world. So what will this mean to other emerging markets which are actually showing good growth? Chetan Ahia, co-head of Global Economics and Chief Asia Economist at Morgan Stanley, joins us on the phone line. Good morning, Chetan. Good to have you at what is a very, very appropriate time uh, because we are beginning to see China rebars uh, uh, quoting lower and uh, uh, the impact being seen on Indian metal companies today, uh, whether it's Hindalco or Vedanta or whether it's uh, more importantly steel companies, there is pressure on them. How do you think this trade war is going to impact and are we going to see uh, actually a trade war? Will there be retaliation? Well, Lata, I think the, I, I will address this in uh, two two sets of uh, points. The first is basically how how do we see this? Whether this will transition into um, something more bad? Mm -hmm. uh, so we classify this into three scenarios. One is the de facto status scenario, which is uh, a more benign outcome. Mm -hmm. Second is a temporary trade dispute scenario, and third is protectionist push, which is basically that there is more actions taken by other trade partners in response to the U.S., and this goes a bit out of control. Mm -hmm. So currently what we are saying is that the benign scenario is out of question because the U.S. has levied tariff on steel and aluminum, mm -hmm. uh, which is then uh, bringing us to the second scenario of temporary trade dispute. Mm -hmm. uh, and to watch whether this transitions into the, the third scenario, which is protectionist push, we are actually tracking whether they go ahead with um, something more serious in form of uh, a tariff against China on a full-fledged basis, like, mm -hmm. you know, something like a 20% tariff or a 10% tariff across the board on all imports from China under Section 301. Mm -hmm. oh. Similarly, we are watching whether uh, they are actually going to do something on reciprocal tax. That's the other thing that the president has mentioned in his tweets, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> that he's considering reciprocal tax. Then it would evolve into this um, uh, protectionist push scenario, which is uh, definitely mm. worse than the temporary te trade dispute scenario. So, so in, in that case, what mm. will happen is in terms of... Sorry, go ahead, Lata. You know, if no. you are working with this temporary trade scenario, your second scenario as your base case, uh, then what do you expect? Will there be pressure on prices uh, uh, or will there be a reduction in trade and therefore will you have to rework even growth figures? No, uh, not not really, because you know if you think of the the way the numbers are positioned right now, uh, the products which have been taken under tariff review <coughs> are about four percent of U.S. total imports, mm. and they are also very small. If you take up steel, uh, aluminum, they are relatively small as a mm. proportion of the global trade uh, for those for those respective products. And it's about 0.5% of U.S. Uh, GDP. So it's really not uh, meaningful enough, the okay. cumulative impact of all the measures that they have taken so far. Okay. So I think the more important question is what happens next. Mm. And that's where we are watching the effort or the announcement on uh, Section 301. Okay. Uh, and then also the reciprocal uh, taxation comment that the uh, administration had given. Okay, Chetan, morning. I also wanted to ask you about China. Are you forecasting a big slowdown in China this year? And what are your thoughts on uh, the rebalancing that the Chinese economy has spoken about in terms of, you know, reducing their investments, etc.? Uh, will that benefit uh, the rest of the world? So, yeah, I, I, we think so. In fact, uh, you know, as you would have seen, uh, we put out this big report on China in uh, early last year on our confidence that they will actually be able to rebalance the economy and transition to high income status. So with, with that picture in mind, we are uh, constructive on the way they will be able to rebalance the economy. And in terms of the growth numbers we have, we're expecting GDP growth to slow a little bit this year by 30 basis points to 6.5%. Um, which I think is uh, really not going to be a big concern for the rest of the region in terms of its impact on uh, that deceleration in growth rate. Okay. Uh, Chetan, good morning. So, you know, this year we'll have rate hikes as well from the U.S. and now this whole protectionism. So, do you get a sense that uh, there could be some problem with the, with the emerging markets this year? This year could be about more about, uh, you know, DMs uh, compared to EMs? Um, 
No, no, actually not really. We we are quite constructive on EM growth outlook, um, and under the impact on the of the Fed rate hike on EMs, the way we approach this is look at um, two <coughs> sets of uh, numbers. First is what is the real rate differential between emerging markets and the U.S. And the second is uh, what is the state of their macro stability indicators. So, for example, you know what happened during taper tantrum is uh, India, which is one of the worst uh, affected during taper tantrum, was running a current account deficit of 6%, percent, mm. uh, 10% inflation, and 200 basis point negative real rate differentials versus Fed. Whereas the whole situation has changed for emerging market as a group and India now, mm. where they are having adequate real rate buffers. Current account balances are back to 2009 levels, okay. and inflation is also very much in control. So we think they will be able to absorb these um, Fed rate hikes. Having said that, what happens is if U.S. 10-year bond yield were to go up uh, in a meaningful manner in the short period mm. uh, of, of the magnitude of, let's say, 50 basis points or more, it does affect um, EM asset markets and EM co- growth confidence for a temporary period. Mm. But I think un- underlying fundamentals will eventually take charge, mm. which we think are in a good shape. So we, we kind of maintain our uh, constructive view on EM growth outlook. Okay. Well, let me come to India itself. You refer to all those buffers, higher real interest rates, uh, lower fiscal deficit, lower current account. But the current account deficit has again started to rear its head up. Uh, the uh, January numbers were $17 billion uh, or, or at least $16.5 billion in terms of a monthly trade deficit tally. Mm-hmm. Are we, uh, uh, you know, you, you see any danger there? Um, Lata, I think so far the current account deficit, yes, it's widened, but mm-hmm. it's still well within the uh, comfort zone. I think the, the magic number for India is 2.5%. That's yeah. sort of what RBI has itself highlighted. Mm. Um, so I think as long as we don't on a 12-month trailing basis, I think, you know, quarterly numbers can be vitiated by seasonality and sometimes what sometimes what happens to um, the country in terms of like, you know, when we were implementing mm. GST, there was some kind of a supply problem for yeah. exports and so it got hit. Mm. So adjusted for it, if the underlying trend is reflecting to the magnitude of 2.5% of mm. GDP or above, mm. then we should be concerned. But at this point of time, we don't uh, really think that we have reached that stage where it is a concern. Actually, we speak about everyone's protectionism. What about ours? I mean, the current budget also raised tariffs on a number of Indian products. Uh, your comment on that as well, uh, growth forecast for FI19? Yeah, I think in general, it, it is not a good idea to put in uh, tariffs. And mm-hmm. so in that context, I think India's uh, decision to put tariff is uh, is not necessarily a, a good idea. I think unless you really have some serious major uh, national security uh, kind of issue, um, in general, it is not a great idea. You know, I was reading a media comment from uh, the UK Prime Minister, mm. and she said that Britain had tried this in the 1960s and 70s, and all what happened is Britain lost out in its market share of yes, exports right. for some of the goods That's because right. they actually uh, lost competitiveness with mm. uh, the effort on protectionism and tariffs. Mm. So in terms of growth, what are you forecasting? Just to come back to Lata's next question. Uh, and what are we looking at from the RBI now? I mean, there is one a thought in the market that we are inching towards a rate hike. But would you concur with that view? So for India, we think growth continues to pick up. Uh, we think we are heading towards 7.5, 7.7 range uh, uh, going forward. Um, for RBI's actions, at this point of time, we think RBI does not have the confidence to uh, take up rate hike because growth has just taken hold in terms of recovery, particularly the most important growth component that RBI should be watching is a uh, capex cycle. And that has yet not uh, even shown full recovery. So we think it would be a bit premature for RBI to take up um, uh, rate hikes right now. Mm. Uh, but of course, they have to keep track on inflation. Our view is that inflation is uh, in control. Mm. Uh, core core inflation is the new terminology now we are using for core inflation because you have to take out the housing um, inflation component to understand what's happening underlying. Mm. And that's running at around 4.3%. So okay. we think that at this point of time, inflation is not a concern for RBI to uh, jump in with a, with a rate hike. But we expect them to take it up in the second half of the calendar year. Okay, that's important. Uh, Chetan Ahia, pleasure speaking with you. Uh, would like to have you sometime on our camera or in our studio.